Hi, in this lecture, we begin to see the divide and conquer paradigm. And as a first example of an algorithm developed using that paradigm, we see merge sort. The general idea of divide and conquer goes back a long way in history. The Latins used to say divide et impera. For us, divide and conquer is the following paradigm for constructing algorithms. If you have a problem, the first step of the paradigm is to divide your problem into subproblems. There can be any number of subproblems. So let's draw three in this picture. Then you're going to solve the subproblems recursively. That is, you're going to apply the same algorithm that you are developing on the subproblems. This algorithm will solve the subproblems and give you partial solutions. And finally, you have to show how to combine this, these partial solutions into a single solution for your original problem. And that's the combined step. The way in which I have described the divide and conquer paradigm is top-down, meaning you start from the big problem and then you make it smaller. Now, every divide and conquer algorithm can be written without recursion in a different iterative or bottom-up fashion. In this fashion, you solve the smallest subproblems first, you combine them and you continue in this fashion until you obtain a solution for the original big problem. Usually recursion is more elegant while the bottom-up fashion is slightly faster. As the first example of an algorithm developed within the framework, let us consider merge sort. Merge sort, as the name says, is a sorting algorithm. The pseudocode for merge sort is as follows. We are going to assume that we have some array in memory that we wish to sort. Okay? And it is convenient for this problem to um, assume that the input to merge sort are two indices, low and high, inside the array that give you a subarray to be sorted. Okay, this subarray now is divided into two subproblems. And the way in which we divide it is fairly natural. We are simply going to divide it in half. So we pick the midpoint split, which is computed as the average of low and high. Here I'm assuming that the division by two returns an integer. And this gives you two subproblems low split and split plus one to high. These two subproblems are now sorted recursively. And then these two sequences have to be merged into a single sorted sequence. So the crux of the merge sort algorithm is this merge operation, which takes two sorted sequences, low to split and split plus one to high, and merges them into a single sorted sequence. Before I give you the pseudocode for the merge operation, let us see an example. Let us see an example of the merge operation. Let us sort the sorted sequence A1 and the sorted sequence A2 into the overall sorted sequence B. The way in which we do this is fairly straightforward. We keep three pointers. They start at the first locations of the arrays. And then we iteratively compare the indexed locations in A1 and D2, and we write the smaller value into B and we update the corresponding pointers. So at the beginning, we compare three and seven. Three is more than seven, so we write a three. 
then we move the pointer in B and we move the pointer in A1. Now we compare 7 and 8, so we write a 7, move the pointer in B, we move the pointer in A2. Now we compare 8 and 13, so we write an 8, move the pointer in B, and we, write, we update the pointer in A1. Now we compare 10 and 13, so now we have 10, change this pointer, change this pointer, now it's 13, change this pointer, change this pointer, now it's 14, change this pointer, change this pointer, now it's 17, change this pointer, and now the pointer to A2 um, goes out of A2, so A2 is over, and in the last stage of the merge operation, we simply copy all that's left in A1 into B. So now we copy 21 and then 57. And we're done. So as you can see, B is the sorted merge of A1 and A2. Okay, now that we have seen an example, I can give you the pseudocode for uh, merge. And I think uh, the pseudocode is something that uh, um, each of you, with a little bit of time, can write down for themselves. But here it is, anyway. So we're going to merge array A, which has S1 entries, and array A2, which has S2 entries, into array B, which has S1 plus S2 entries. So we have these three pointers, I1, I2, and J. J is the pointer into B. They start at 1. And then uh, again, um, we iteratively compare the index positions in A1 and D2. And we write the smallest one into B. And we update the corresponding pointers. OK, so if the, for example, if the entry in A1 is smaller, we write that entry into B, and then we update the pointers. When one of the two arrays is over, we put what's left of the other one into B. We now need to analyze the running time of merge sort. Let us start with the running time of the merge operation. How long does it take to merge A1 and A2 into B? Well, an inspection of the pseudocode reveals that this takes time linear in the length of A1 and Z2. So it's order of S1 plus S2. And for later purposes, I'm going to write this as a C times S1 plus S2 for some constant C. OK, so. Given that we have this bound for the time for the merge operation, I can now write a recurrence relation for the running time of merge sort. Okay. So I'm not going to write down the time explicitly in close form for now, but I'm going to write down a recurrence relation. Well, what's the relation? Well, if I want to sort an array with n elements, okay, what happens? First, we divide it into two arrays which have size about half, and then we, we merge them, okay? So this gives the relation two times Tn over two plus the time to merge. So C times N is the time to merge, and this two times Tn over two comes from these two recursive calls. This is a recurrence relation, and it's not immediately clear how much this is. Is this n or n squared or through the n? So we have to analyze the recurrence relation. This is a very important task that we will be faced with many times in this class. Great. So let's see how you solve the recurrence tn equals to t twice tn over 2 plus cn. The basic idea is to expand the recurrence to obtain a recursion tree. Okay, so we start with the t of n, 
and then we replace t of n using the recurrence so this gives a cost of cn and then two recursive calls t over 2 and t over 2 and these last two can be further expanded and we can continue in this fashion until we build this entire tree when we reach the bottom of the tree you have sub problems of constant size they can be solved uh, as we mentioned earlier from scratch and the cost for that would just be a constant which for convenience uh, i'm going to call c again why are we doing this because now i can think of grouping the costs in a way that's convenient for me specifically i'm going to look at what's the cost per level well at the first level i just have a cn at the second level I have cn over 2 plus cn over 2. Okay, that's just twice cn over 2, which is just a cn. So it's again cn. At the next level, you have 4 times cn over 4, and that's again just a cn. So, and this continues at the next levels. So we see that the sum of the costs at level i is true the i times cn over true the i, which is just a cn. So every level has the same cost as cn. Okay, so now let's ask ourselves uh, how many levels do we have? What is the depth of the tree? Well, every time we divide the input length in half, because we have n over 2 here. So the number of levels will be log n. Hence, we can say that you have a cost of cn per log n levels, and you get that the t of n is equal to cn log n. And that's the solution to the recurrence. So as we can see, the running time is pretty good. It's close to linear, though it's not quite linear. It's linear times the logarithmic function. After having analyzed the time, we can ask ourselves about the space. And well, just to merge the sorted arrays, we need to use a linear space. Okay. And in fact, you can implement a merge sort to just use additional linear space. Okay. An important point here is that the merge operation does not operate in place. If you have two arrays to merge, you're going to need somewhere else an additional array that you can use for the merge operation. Okay, so just this costs extra n, we would see later a fancier version of merge sort, which has a merge operation which works in place and uses much less space. But for now, we stop here.